All right, all right. Welcome again. Today, we're going to talk to the women. <laughs> um, it's going to be a great time. I'm going to answer a few questions that I've received since yesterday. And I'm going to continue the discussions on forgiveness more and more. And just uh, how to do that. How do you forgive? And how do you handle some of the feelings that come with trying to forgive? Yesterday, we talked about the three secrets that you need to know that will make it easier to forgive and make it quicker. So if you didn't watch that, please um, jump on it. It's going to be episode um, 57. Today is 58. And it's going to be good. You're going to be blessed. All right. So if you're missing me for the first time, my name is Ade Sobanjo. I am a pastor and an unconditional love coach. I help men hit their goals in marriage, especially if you find that your marriage is struggling. On this channel, though, I answer questions that believers have about marriage. And we do all of that using the strategy that God has designed, which is love, agape. When God's love floods your heart, changes your whole life, changes your marriage. And that's what I talk about. That's what I coach people to do. And I've seen several, several marriages transformed, mine included. And I want that to be your story also. First thing I feel um, I'm going to share with you is that when you are good at forgiving your spouse and you are fast to do so, you have brought a very powerful tool for strengthening your marriage into it. You, you, it's like you brought a, a, a cord to tie your marriage to, together, you, to, to hold your marriage together. When, a, when couples know how to forgive each other fast, you have a marriage that's solid. Now, if you have the strength and, and, and God shows you how to forgive fast, what happens is that you don't carry the burden and the hurt and you're able to address the pain and the weakness that your husband has or your wife has if you're the husband and you're going to be able to then stand with them to overcome that and instead of abandoning the marriage you strengthen the marriage so it is so crucial to allow god's love to flood your heart so that you can be uh, forgive faster and easier the closer you are to someone the more vulnerable you are to someone, the deeper they can hurt you. And this is why in marriage, it is so, so crucial to know how to forgive because this person is going to be the closest person you can have in your life if you want to have the best kind of marriage. And as such, they can hurt you the deepest, even when they do the same thing that other people do. You cannot love without the risk of being hurt connecting with someone interacting closely and and openly closely and openly with someone automatically opens you up to them being um, able to hurt you what if you do not have the opportunity to speak to the person uh, or to express your feelings to your husband who's hurt you or to your wife who has hurt you what do you do in that case when we're talking about forgiving, we're not talking about reconciling. They're not the same thing. Forgiveness is different from reconciliation. For reconciliation to happen, there has to be a discussion. For a friendship to be rebuilt or for a marriage to, to move forward, there, there's a need for each party to agree that they want to move forward. So we're going to have to separate the two. And this is one of the reasons why a lot of people do not know how to forgive because they assume that forgiveness and reconciliation are the same. They are not necessarily the same. When you look at scripture, scripture doesn't say that we ought to be friends. It just says, forgive them from your heart. In other words, I release them. I don't want, have any negative intentions for them. I don't have any negative desires. For them, I actually recognize that I could be in the same spot and the Lord has forgiven me more. So I also release them and I, I put them in God's hands to take care of them as He's taking care of me. That's what it means to forgive. There is a three step process that I share uh, about forgiveness, and one of them is accepting the pain that 
and 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 uh, acknowledging the feelings that you have as a result of the hurt that it caused but what i have not shared with you or maybe what may not be clear is that it doesn't mean that you have to share it with that person in particular it can be expressed to god it can be expressed to your pastor your your coach your leader and it can be expressed to just open air yes as long as you acknowledge that you know uh, this behavior of my husband has has made me feel uh sad betrayed whatever the feelings are you are on the path to healing and they don't need to change the key to getting to forgive someone is to be able to resolve the pro the, whatever happened in your mind not to suppress it not to pretend as if it didn't happen but you got to express the pain and also resolve the reason the 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 have a reason why something like that can happen the man who's uh who has uh, abused their wife physically and the wife is trying to forgive them i would encourage her to recognize that there's a reason why he does that and, and the reason why he does that is because he doesn't know better now, the, what I mean that he doesn't know better is not that he doesn't know that it's wrong to hit his wife. And it's not that he doesn't know that it is criminal to hit his wife. Uh, or that he doesn't know that God doesn't, a godly person doesn't do that. What I'm saying is that if they knew the danger and the destruction that they are afflicting upon their wives and this, the the impact that that's going to have on on them, on their wives and on their children, and they knew that that would also backfire on them because you are one with your wife, you wouldn't do that. And if, but they did not do And since they've done that, then they are, they don't have the information. They don't know better. That's the first thing. Number two, they have learned this habit for years. And those, ha this habit is going to, um, it's there because they got it from somewhere. They were not born with that. The, every child is born innocent. And so when a person begins to do things that are hurtful and destructive, it's because they picked it up from somewhere, from their lives, from their experiences, and, and from uh, their propensity towards that. And, and so when you have those in your mind and say, okay, if, if a person is raised in a place where they've been hit and where they've been threatened, the chances that they're going to do so is extremely high and if they don't allow Christ to take hold of their heart, they're going to do that. So does that help you stay more in the marriage? Of course not. That tells you that this person is going to do this again and most likely would be tempted to do it again. So if your wife, uh, you've been hit by your husband, there is a tendency that they can hit you again. So you can say then, well, I know that they are, they are they're most likely going to do this again but the goal is not to destroy and they don't know how impactful this behavior is to me but i do not have to continue to expose myself to that destruction unless i know that there's a change this information that i just mentioned you keep it for reconciliation. Unless I know that they're not going to hurt me again, unless I know that they're not going to hit me again, I cannot just expose myself to the potential of being hit and hurt without um, getting something done with that. So we keep that information for reconciliation, but for forgiveness, we take note that number one, they don't know what they're doing because if they knew they wouldn't do it. Number two, they've, they've learned it from somewhere and they, it's already a habit in them or it's a, it's a thing that they think is all right and they're doing it and because of that if you the person so you the wife now that's been hit that's been abused you can then say you know what if i was the one brought up like them most likely i would do similar things so then i release them i release them to god to do the things that he does best number one to help them see and convict them of the negatives the wrong that they are doing number two to work righteousness into them so that they don't do it again and number three to see if they can work towards reconciliation and get help to make things better so those are the things that you would then have in your mind 
while you release them to God. All right? May the Lord bless you. May the Lord strengthen you and increase you. Now, until we meet again tomorrow, continue to love like Jesus and make mega impact. Bye for now.